<laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Volpe. I am the Associate Curator of Photography here at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, and I'm so pleased to welcome you to Icons of Style, a Century of Fashion Photography. Icons of Style was developed by curator Paul Martineau of the J. Paul Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California. And we're thrilled to bring this exhibition, which celebrates the intersection of fashion and photography to Houston. Here at MFAH, the show has been adapted and augmented for you, our audience. About one half or 100 of the works of art in the exhibition appeared at the Getty, and the other 100 photographs were added for our Houston presentation. Those additions include the costumes and accessories you will see on display, the photographs from MFAH's permanent collection, and a carefully chosen selection of loans from photographers, museums, collectors, and galleries across the country and around the world. So in the galleries, you will find more than 200 photographs separated into 19 sections, featuring the work of more than 90 photographers paired with 15 costumes and four dynamic projections. And of course, none of this would be possible without our incredible lenders here in Houston and elsewhere, and especially our donors, River Oaks District, Luther King Capital Management, and Dior. And to our whole museum team that does the tough job of getting the work on the walls, I give my sincere thanks. So this afternoon, I'm going to focus solely on the photographs on display. I apologize, I am a photo curator. But to get more information about the beautiful costumes, that can be found on the audio guide and the labels, and I highly recommend the audio guide. It's absolutely terrific. Now, a little bit of a warning. Styles and trends in fashion photography move swiftly. And by necessity, this short introduction to the exhibition will move really fast. But it's always best to start at the beginning. So what is a fashion photograph? Well, in the history of fashion photography, the groundbreaking 1979 exhibition and catalog, Nancy Hall Duncan begins with a straightforward definition. A fashion photograph is a photograph made specifically to show clothing or accessories with the intent of documenting or selling the fashion. Clothing or accessories, huh? I do not see any of those on the right. <laughs> documenting or selling fashion, that's not what Steichen's Gloria Swanson is about either. It's clear that the definition developed by Duncan doesn't fit the images here, made by two masters of fashion photography. So the truth is it's hard to define fashion photography. One would assume that the most basic element of that type of photograph would be fashion, but that's not always the case. Sometimes the theme is lifestyle, sometimes it's mood, and sometimes it's fashion. Rather than pin down a confining definition of fashion photography, Icons of Style explores its multitude of forms and meanings over the past 100 years. It celebrates all the artistic possibilities and stylistic virtuosity explored by talented photographers who have worked under the broad umbrella of modern fashion. One thing is consistent in fashion photography. Because it reflects the latest trends both in clothing and in culture, it is one of the most revealing documents of the attitudes, artistic conventions, and aims of its era. The luxury of Cecil Beaton's work from 1948 reflects the desire for elegance and order after the austerity and chaos of war. Hassan Hajjaj's 2017 portrait of Cardi B, on the other hand, reflects our current moment, an increasingly globalized marketplace and society where fashion, entertainment, consumerism, and politics are intertwined. Our exhibition begins in the early 20th century. In this era, two iconic American fashion publications came into their own, Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. Previously a social journal, Vogue turned solely to fashion in 1909, and in 1913, Harper's Bazaar, which was a literary journal, followed Vogue's lead. In that same year, media company Condé Nast, which oversees Vogue and Vanity Fair, hired Baron Adolf de Meyer as a staff photographer. 
He created beautiful portraits of fashionable socialites for Vogue. And these photos were so successful that they were used more than traditional illustrations for fashion editorials. De Meyer brought the right credentials to the position. He had entered fashionable London society through his marriage to the daughter of a duchess, and he was knighted by the king of Saxony. But he also brought a specific artistry to the role. Rather than producing documentary fashion plates, De Meyer disintegrated form and bathed his pictures in shimmering light. He was drawing from art photography of the time, specifically the soft focus and manipulated aesthetic of pictorialism, exemplified here in the work of Clarence White. This early example demonstrates the expansive definition of fashion photography. It's not just an exacting depiction of a garment's details, but aspirational images evo evocative of mood or lifestyle. In the early 1920s, Edward Steichen replaced the soft focus effects of De Meyer's style with a higher degree of clarity when he became the chief photographer for Condé Nast. At the time of his hiring, Steichen was a noted art photographer who had photographed in a pictorialist style. However, after he served in the US Army during World War I, he abandoned that gauzy aesthetic and applied a more modernist sharp eye to his photos, characterized by strong line and shape. Despite his aesthetic turn, light remained an essential element in his work, as is evident in the dramatically lit setting of Perfection in Black. Underscored by his careful lighting, Steichen was able to depict the differences of the two dresses through the po pose and posture of his models. The contrapposto pose of the model at left echoes the curve of the piano lid and reveals the sensuality of the coal black satin gown, a formal gar garment. While the erect pose of the model at right conveys the straightforward simplicity of the black jersey dress made for everyday wear. The abstract effects of light, shadow, and form were also used to full advantage in the Art Deco work of jo George Heinegen Hune. Though it has become one of fashion's most iconic images, bathing suits by Izod might also be one of its most misunderstood. It appears to be shot from a diving board overlooking an immense ocean, but this photograph was created on the roof of Vogue's Paris studio. Wooden boxes make up that diving board, while an out of focus low wall gives the impression of water meeting the horizon. Unsatisfied with the aesthetic limits imposed by the studio setting, Heinegen Hune staged this photograph using his student, Horst P. Horst, and a female model in their sleek linear Art Deco style and utilizing theatrical lighting and trompe l'oeil effects to great advantage. Stage lighting and trompe l'oeil are the tools of photographers and filmmakers alike. So photographs of celebrities in the 1930s were visually persuasive and expressive. As Vogue declared in 1938, Hollywood is the most perfect visual medium of fashion pro propaganda that ever existed. Anna Mae Wong's 1934 portrait by Eugene Ritchie depicts the Asian American star in her iconic dragon dress. The photograph was widely distributed and only heightened Wong's fame and the popularity of her fashion. Wong's dragon dress is so in iconic, in fact, that it is in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And in 2015, this iconic costume inspired the creative minds behind one of fashion's biggest nights, the Met Ball. Building on the theme, China Through the Looking Glass, attendees like actress Jennifer Lopez and daughter of Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour, named B. Schaefer, arrived in their own updated versions of Wong's pioneering style. Now, just as fashionistas such as Wong are trendsetters, photographers often pioneer different styles and approaches to their medium. Lillian Bassman's solarized fashion study utilized photography's unique and symbiotic relationship with light to create a distinctive fashion image. By adopting solarization, an experimental technique of light that results in a reversal of tones, Bassman's fashion work was linked 
to the most advanced avant-garde photography of the time and lent the cachet of ultra-modern art to the fashion depicted. As advances were made in photographic technology, artists had more tools available for photographing fashion. The invention of Kodachrome color film in 1935 signaled the start of color fashion photography. It's safe to say that Norman Parkinson's charge to photograph a red Otto Lucas hat would have been somewhat less successful without the possibility of color. This bold image with its swath of red would have made an incredible impact on the pages of a magazine. Parkinson embraced the new technology of color imagery through the lens of an old favorite. Parkinson recreated a well-loved and boldly colored work of art. The original painting, known affectionately as the corn poppy, is on view in Beck Galleries of Museum of Fine Arts Houston and is also always a fashionable choice for social media. The artistic ferment of Paris in the 1930s, particularly the fantastic, mysterious, and dreamlike aspects of surrealism, had a profound influence on fashion photography. Horst P. Horst's photographs of this period feature mysterious, whimsical, and surreal elements. He shared the surreal, with the surrealists a fascination with the representation of the female form, often fragmenting the body in unique ways, a scene here on the left in birthday gloves, a scene in which the model's face and body are obscured by tissue paper, resulting in a visual field of fractured forms, or in ballet bacchanal, which silhouettes and obscures the full figures of the models. His unique style and influence lives on in the work of today's fashion photographers like Tim Walker, who consciously quoted from this master of surrealism. Also peren perennially influential is the work of Richard Avedon. By mid-century, Avedon was chief photographer at Harper's Bazaar and America's preeminent fashion photographer, rivaled only by Irving Penn. He transformed the pages of the magazine by taking his models out of the studio and capturing them in dynamic movement. Avedon staged his models as glamorous but real women whose carefree exuberance was both sophisticated and appealing. His most iconic image, and perhaps one of the most iconic in fashion history, is Dovima with Elephants. Dovima was the highest paid fashion model when Avedon selected her for a photo shoot of Christian Dior's fall collection in 1955. Shot at Cirque de Ver in Paris, Avedon's photograph, I think was best summed up by my boss, Malcolm Daniels, astute description, elegance and elephants. Her regal form and sleek couture a marked contrast to the lumbering form of her animal co-stars. But that is all I'm gonna say about this incredible work at present. But to learn everything you ever wanted to know, and certainly more than you ever wanted to know, I hope to see you back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. when I present a full lecture on the making of this iconic photo. The next section, Out of the Studio, celebrates the work of those photographers following Avedon's lead, those who brought their models out into the world, including this unique work by Gordon Parks. Here, Parks photographed Frances McLaughlin Gill as she photographs a model. The work presents a behind-the-scenes peek at the nature of fashion photography while highlighting a fellow outsider. At the time, McLaughlin Gill was one of the only female photographers in the industry, and Parks was one of the only African-American fashion photographers. Together, they fought for visibility in their field, an effort given visual form in this photograph. Another leader in the field of fashion photography at mid-century, whose work is featured in our elegance section, is Irving Penn. Penn's photos are celebrated for their rich beauty, which I see you're all appreciating as I heard the oohs and ahs coming out of you when this photo went up. Their constructed shape, the elegance of silhouette, the abstract play of line and volume and their beautiful tone are just luscious. Compared with the immediacy and movement of Avedon's photographs, 
Penn's work aimed at timelessness and complete formal clarity. Perhaps his most extraordinary shots are those done in collaboration with his favorite model and later wife, seen here, Lisa Fonsa Greaves. Fashion photography in the 1960s encompassed more socially and culturally oriented themes. Fashion design began to show the influence of many diverse sources, from graphic design to the space program to op and pop art, and fashion photography followed suit. The visual dynamism of op and pop was embraced by fashion photographers in the form of odd angles, harsh contrasts, and bold pattern compositions. This was a playful, purely visual celebration of the art, personality, and fashion. In the mid-1960s, challenges to the long-standing practices of racial exclusion in fashion reached a zenith. In 1966, photographer Kwame Brathwaite and his brother Elam Brath founded Grandasa Models. The women of Grandasa are seen here in the mural, which in its original form was a poster used to advertise the group and their mission, Black is Beautiful. With their natural hair, dark skin, and curvy figures that were all but banned from Eurocentric mainstream fashion, the Grandassa models celebrated African-American style and identity. Their photographic images gave rise to the rally cry, black is beautiful, and worked to expand the previously whitewashed definition of beauty in fashion. Here, adherents to Grandassa's pioneering natural style try their hand at modeling for Brathwaite. Also challenging conventions, but doing so in a much different way, was Helmut Newton. In the 1970s, Newton created a provocative photographic style that presented women as strong and comfortable in their bodies through decadent eroticism. He emphasized that the erotic element could be utilized to make the female figure stronger, not weak, not vulnerable, and not only subject to the gaze of a male. In fact, in the image on the left, he flips the script, depicting a man as the subject of a female gaze, and I think pioneering what we now refer to as manspreading. Following in Newton's wake, power shifted briefly in fashion photography, as it was no longer all in the hands of photographers, but now in the well-manicured ma hands of supermodels. In de demand by fashion designers and advertisers, supermodels commanded astronomical salaries. As Linda Evangelista commented to Vogue in 1990, we don't wake up for less than $10,000 a day. And they became household names, Naomi, Cindy, Claudia, Iman, etc. As this image by Herbert suggests, fashions were no longer necessary in fashion photography, only supermodels. While some fashion photographers reveled in this world of fame, money, and supermodels, others rejected it. That is not to say they were not tied up in big business and massive profits, just that their images embraced a simplified, less overtly moneyed aesthetic. The clean lines of Calvin Klein's fashion offerings were a perfect match for this clean photographic style. The pared down photographs produced for Calvin Klein became legendary. And in 1982, Bruce Weber created this image for the company. Printed on a large billboard in Times Square, several stories high, the Olympic athlete in his white Calvin Kleins stopped traffic and caused a sensation. The birth of MTV in 1981 ushered in a new force in fashion, the music industry. As Boston Globe writer Tina Cassidy noted, for better or worse, and mostly worse, there's a video to blame for every hairstyle, every must-have first day of school outfit, and every embarrassing class picture taken after August 1st, 1981. The day MTV launched a revolution in the way a generation aspired to look. In the 1990s, Tejana singer Selena inspired the fashions of the next decade. 
Texas photographer John Dyer photographed her for Texas Monthly in 1992. The entertainer designed her own clothes, and she is seen here in her iconic sparkly bustier and studded hat. Today, she remains a fashion icon, and in the exhibition, visitors like you will get the chance to display your own style in our Selena-inspired selfie station. We've already had some staff and friends give it a try, so I hope to see your image join the group. Just be sure to add the hashtag IconsMFAH, and you'll see your own image added to the gallery. Fashion is a two-way street, and while haute couture and fashion design houses influence the spread of new styles, those fashion designs of the highest realm are equally influenced by popular trends from the public. In the street style section, we compare Jeanette Beckman's Rivera Bad Girls, featuring an East LA girl gang, and Merton Marcus's high fashion image for W Magazine. The similarities are shocking. Just as the couture fashions in the photo on the right borrow from the style of the girls in East LA that you see on the left, Merton Marcus's photographic style is also less polished and more akin to street photography with its close cropping, odd juxtapositions, and its unsentimental aesthetic. As a counterpoint to the gritty realism of that 90s street style, Many photographers produced fantastic imaginative images with large production bu budgets and dynamic fashions to photograph. Artists let their imaginations direct their work. Hugely artificial and dazzlingly inventive, camouflage blurs the boundaries between straight photography and software-driven imagery. Sunsbow's model is caught in a graphic field of black and white, tumbling, as if in a regimented and inescapable digital world of our imagination. While artists like Sunsbo cast their images in the future, others find inspiration in the past. With more than a century of history to draw from, today's fashion photographers often look to their predecessors for inspiration. Photographer Kurt Marcus's simplified and refined style and beautiful technique is inspired by the mid-century work of Irving Penn. Though unlike Penn's use of professional models, Marcus uses the citizens of the towns he visits for his fashion shoots, casting them, casting them in beautiful settings and creating timeless images. The final section of the exhibition features fashion photography today. In this gallery, we survey the current state of the field. Amid an increasingly globalized culture and the inclusive landscape of social media, the fashion industry has now truly begun to diversify. The September issue of Vogue magazine is each year's longest and most anticipated edition, an aspirational tome featuring the future of fashion and style. In 2018, the magazine took a critical step forward, inviting Beyonce Knowles to collaborate on the choice of photographer and dress for the all-important cover. Knowles selected the talented 23-year-old photographer Tyler Mitchell and ushered in an important historical moment. Mitchell was the first African-American photographer to shoot a Vogue cover in September 2018. Emphasizing the importance of diversity, Knowles noted in the editor's letter, until there is a mosaic of perspectives coming from different ethnicities behind the lens, we will continue to have a narrow approach and view of what the world actually looks like. Mitchell's triumphant photograph highlights Knowles, crowned with a blooming bouquet that symbolizes rebirth and suggests a bright new era of fashion photography. Well, that was our oops, excuse me, whirlwind tour of Icons of Style. I hope it whetted your appetite for more exploration upstairs in the gallery. And for additional information about all the works on display, I covered a mere handful, and there are more than 200 photographs alone. 
For more information, please read the labels and pick up the audio guide, which again is fantastic. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the exhibition.